The anthem for the voiceless. That's the focus of tonight's angle. Practically overnight, this is crazy. The singer's gone from unknown to number one on the Billboard charts. And this is what happened. The unsigned artist breakout hit, it's called Rich Men North of Richmond, went viral online earlier this month. And now it's sitting in the top spot on the Billboard Hot 100. He's the first artist ever in history to reach that milestone with no prior history on the chart in any form whatsoever. Well, an historic climb on the charts. That should be a wake-up call to these out-of-touch elites in politics, the entertainment industry, who frankly routinely write off or look down on half the country. Because all this damn country does is keep on kicking them down. Lord, it's a damn shame what the world's gotten to. So weeks after we featured the song on The Angle, the Today Show finally caught up to the groundswell. Not with bias, but with bewilderment. Conservatives have rallied behind the track. It calls out wealthy legislators in Washington, D.C. Some are describing it as raw and authentic. And although on his own YouTube channel, he posted a video in which he labeled his political views, quote, dead center down the aisle, everybody is talking about this thing. Well, they're talking all right, but it's not all nice. The Venomous crew over at CNN is clearly seething over the breakout success of those establishing their own counterculture. Well, the left is so used to having monopoly, aren't they, in music and in film, theater, even sports, that they start to sputter and fume at any perceived encroachment by non-wokesters. Liberal commentator Oliver Darcy over at CNN described Americans as primed to loathe mainstream pop culture in the media and that they are willing to open their pocketbooks to champion their politics. Well, that's true. But Darcy went on to warn that Anthony's success could spell the end of a shared popular culture similar to how the advent of right-wing talk radio and Fox News ultimately spelled the end of a shared understanding of current events. Okay. A shared understanding of current events. A shared popular culture. What on earth is Mr. Darcy talking about? Now, someone needs to break it to the modern left. We did, at one point, have a shared culture. And year by year, decade by decade, they mocked it, they trashed it, and ultimately they destroyed it. And ever since, powerful interests have worked to supplant traditional American values country, family, faith, with a radical sexual and political agenda. The principle of tolerance, just tolerate everybody, well, that gave way to forced acceptance. And in the process, what did they do? They ruined the news business. Walter Cronkite wanted to be trusted by everyone, remember? Well, then Dan Rather, he wanted to be known as an outspoken lefty. Well, they both got what they wanted. Eventually, an opening was created for Rush Limbaugh and for Fox News. Well, they ruined education, too. Test scores, they're plummeting across America. Standards are being lowered or even eliminated. The curricula, bastardized. This spawned the homeschooling phenomenon. Well, they did the same to film, theater, music, fashion. Years ago, in one of my books, I called it the pornification of the culture. Well, it's pornified and too often now politicized as well. And these performers, they just can't stop making fools of themselves. I have thought an awful lot about blowing up the White House. You know, when Donald Trump spoke at his inauguration about American carnage, I assumed that was something he was against, not a campaign promise. The past four years have left us as a nation diminished and divided. We are better than this. America is better than this. Oh, tell us about it. So a vacuum has been created. All right, at least half of the country doesn't listen to those fools. And they, they don't like what's happening to our kids, to our schools, and they certainly don't like what's happening in most of our popular culture. They don't trust Hollywood, they don't trust the news media, and they don't even trust most politicians, frankly, in either party. So what does this do? This opens the door to new voices in politics and new voices in the culture who want to create movements and, in this case, want to create music and then films plays, and even businesses for the underserved. 
And as for the consumers, what do they do? Well, they boycott woke nonsense at places like Target, Bud Light, or they support outsider films like The Sound of Freedom or musicians like Oliver Anthony. That's their own form of protest. So are liberals really so clueless that they didn't already know that the culture was splintered and that they did it? Now, I remember when they were urging a boycott of their own, of Chick-fil-A, because the CEO gave money to Christian charities. But we Christians or other traditional Americans, what are we supposed to do? Shovel our money to people who obviously despise us? We're not supposed to try to create alternative entertainment, business, news channels? Oh, 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 I get it. Sorry. They're the only ones entitled to protest and create. Oh, it was great when they were the only ones, right, challenging the old guard, the old guard back in the 60s and the 70s with their films and with their music. But when Oliver Anthony, guy nobody's heard of, strikes a chord with his song, it's seen as a threat. Well, newsflash to the elites. Long before Oliver Anthony, country music embodied the independent, kind of kick-ass American spirit, the working class, the forgotten man, and a simpler way of life. Jason Aldean's uh, Try That in a Small Town is reminiscent of Hank William Jr.'s classic. I got a shotgun, a rifle, and a four-wheel drive, and a country boy can survive. Country folks can survive. And then it was back in 1974 that Johnny Cash released Ragged Old Flag. That was a patriotic ode. But liberals say that they're triggered today when they see too many American flags. Athletes made millions after refusing to stand for the anthem. So, yeah. There are a lot of people out there who love the country, and they're ticked off, and they want their own space. But they're not going to find it at Disney. They couldn't do a live remake of Snow White at Disney without turning it political. The, the original cartoon came out in 1937, yeah. and very evidently so. <laughs> um, there is a big focus on her love story um, with a guy who literally stalks her. <laughs> Weird, weird. The fact that she's not going to be saved by the prince, and she's the proactive one, and she's the one who set the terms, um, is what makes it so relevant to where we are today. Relevant? Where we are today is that Disney is relegated to making live-action remakes of their most storied animated films and turning them into tedious spectacles starring bubblehead actors and actresses who parrot liberal tropes. And, of course, directed by liberal adults who think they're more talented than Walt Disney himself. Now, let's see which the audience likes better. The original that Ms. Zegler claims is so terrifying and outdated, or the 2024 version oozing with female empowerment. So, look, you can have a common culture, or you can have an alienating left-wing propaganda machine, but you cannot have both. And that's the angle. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.